Working for a family of billionaires round the clock sounds like a very lavish lifestyle with fair wages and time off, right? Heh, <laughs> nah, it's actually the exact opposite of that. Welcome to Beyond the Screen, I'm Nate Janot, and today we're breaking down the top 10 times the Kardashians were exposed for mistreating their staff. Number 10, Kim's nannies. Kim Kardashian is arguably one of the most famous of the Kardashian sisters, and it would also seem she's the busiest. For example, Kim has four kids, a skincare line, her Skims brand, she's attending law school, School, co-founded an equity team, and even recently hopped on the podcast train. In addition to filming her new reality show on Hulu, you may be asking yourself, how does one woman do all of that by herself? Well, she pays people to do it for her, duh. She has multiple assistants and nannies to help her stay above the overwhelming workload, but has been known to treat them as lesser than herself. For instance, on several occasions, Kim and her daughter North would go to lunch accompanied by a nanny, but Kim would always make her nanny sit at a separate table far away from them when they were in restaurants. But she is known to make her nannies also walk at least like 10 feet away from her at all times. Unless she has multiple nannies with her at once, then she likes to make them stand in like a V formation because it looks cool apparently. If they walk near her or attempt to try and walk side by side, she blows up at them behind closed doors. And needless to say, she has had many nannies over the year and has probably made a lot of them cry at least once. Number 9. Courtney in general while Kim may not be the best boss in the world, it's Courtney who is known as the absolute worst boss of all time. According to former nannies, Courtney was by far the worst Kardashian to work for. Not only is she a neat freak needing every single thing to be exactly where it should be, but she's also known for being surprisingly cheap, even once calling a grocery store while she was shopping to compare the prices of a chicken breast. Cause you know, if anyone needs that extra 99 cents, it's Courtney. But this isn't the worst thing she's done. At one time, Courtney's daughter had bitten a nanny so hard that she had to quit. But instead of letting it go and taking responsibility for not teaching her daughter how to act properly, she actually berated the nanny and told her that she should have said something to her daughter in the moment. Cause yes, blame the woman that you're paying to raise your child instead of the child itself who's probably got some kind of an abandonment issue. Number 8. Toxic Chemicals Kylie Jenner is the youngest of the Kardashian clan, is an extremely successful for her age. In 2019, she made the cover of Forbes magazine as the youngest self-made billionaire ever following the successful partnership between her cosmetic brand and Ulta, a beauty salon company, which would allow the brand previously only available online and in random pop-up stores to be placed on shelves in Ulta's 1,000 plus stores. This is unfortunate considering the true nature of just where those products come from. You see, many employees at the factory that mix and package her makeup um, have reported that they were never given any proper safety equipment that one would require to do that job. They were only given hair nets, lab coats, and safety goggles, leaving their hands and faces completely exposed. And workers would regularly report migraines, mild chemical burns on their hands, and a myriad of other symptoms. If this isn't bad enough, they were also forced to act as human test subjects for Kylie's new products. Now, Kylie was very proud of her company not testing products on animals, but we can agree that using people like guinea pigs is like a billion times worse, right guys? Number seven, the underpay. While the Kardashians have had their problems with staff individually, there seems to be one specifically toxic trait that the family shares as a unit. They don't like to pay people. Former employees have come forward over the years calling out the family for not paying them fair wages or overtime hours. The Kardashians don't cover expenses, meaning gas, food, rent, anything that you need is paid out of pocket, with zero money coming back to you. To make matters worse, the Kardashians wouldn't pay them on a set amount of days, meaning you just kinda got a check when you got a check and had to deal with it in between A and B. You would think with the family being one of the richest in the world that they would at least pay the people that help run their lives. Now, while they have a massive staff of people cooking their food, folding their clothes, and raising their children, they barely even acknowledge their existence. Just imagine what would happen if that staff decided to walk out. The family would crumble in less than a day. Number six, factory workers. Popping back to Kylie's makeup factory for a moment, we felt the need to split her misdoings into two separate entries simply because of just how messed up this place really is. Not only do they not have proper safety equipment and are basically used as human test subjects whenever Kylie wants, the factory itself is small and cramped, with many employees claiming that there were too many workers and not enough space. This description sounds very similar to, oh, a sweatshop, which is a word describing a workplace in which the employees work ridiculous hours and brutal conditions for nearly nothing for pay. And a lot of people agreed with that statement. 
One former tester recounts having to constantly go back and forth to the bathroom as her anxiety was always through the roof. She was around so many people so much of her day and it was such a terrible work environment, we completely understand the need to escape. At one point a few years back, Kylie even refused to pay her employees at a garment factory in Bangladesh, leaving thousands of employees with no money and no idea when or if they were going to return to work. Man, you know what? You suck, Kylie! Number 5. Victoria Victoria Valero has been Kylie's close personal assistant since 2015. But the pair go back to 2014 when she was interning as a personal assistant for Kylie's mother, Chris. After gaining the family's trust, she was hired as Kylie's house manager at first, but soon after became her personal assistant. Herself and Jenner became very close over the years, and Victoria was even present at the secret birth of Kylie's daughter, Stormy. Now, you would think with being so close to the family through thick and thin that she would want to stick around, right? Well, all good things must come to an end, as Victoria decided to quit in 2019. Many fans allege that she had just quit her job to focus on becoming an Instagram influencer, but that was far from her real reason for leaving. Being in that family means seeing a lot of stuff and doing a lot of stuff, and Victoria was basically in charge of scheduling Kylie's life, booking appointments, meetings, massages, all of this stressful enough basically being a 24-7 gig, but the job was also very degrading, with Kylie having Victoria even pull out a stool once and set it up outside so that Kylie could get out of her car smoother. I think anyone in their right mind would want to get out of that job as quickly as possible. Number 4. Paid and Exposure when Andre Turbia, a very famous YouTube animator and content creator, was asked to work with Kylie Jenner, he thought that his life would change forever. He was under the impression that the collaboration would grant him a huge amount of money, possibly a guest spot on her reality TV show, or maybe some shout outs online via Instagram and Twitter. However, when Andre brought up the topic of his compensations to Jenner, she responded with, oh, the company doesn't actually have a budget right now to pay you, so we're just gonna have to pay you an exposure. Like, okay, that's cool. You can't cook exposure in a frying pan and eat it for dinner though. And I'm pretty sure it's not currency accepted at any gas stations or banks that I know of. And of course, by exposure, she meant that Andre's name was going to be printed as small as possible underneath her content. Andre did what anyone in their right mind would do in that situation and refused to work with her, telling her to take her exposure and shove it where the sun don't shine. Number three, GoFundMe. In March 2021, Kylie, oh look, she's back again, shared an Instagram post asking for prayers for one of her makeup artist named Samuel Rhoda. The post redirected fans to a GoFundMe page where they were asking to donate money for covering his medical bills for an upcoming surgery. That's right, the woman made a feature on Forbes top 60 self-made women and was asking her fans to give over the goods. So why would she not just use some of her billions of dollars to cover the bills herself? Well, she went online to claim that her and Sam didn't actually know each other personally, but she had worked with him a few years ago and thought that he was a sweetheart. Suppose Supposedly her current makeup artist had shared a post about Samuel's accident, which included a link to a GoFundMe campaign created by his family. She went on to let fans know that she herself donated like $5,000. Okay, sure, sure that's a ton of money for us, but for Jenner that's like 5 bucks. So something tells me the surgery is going to be a little bit more than that. This is just another instance proving that Kylie is the absolute worst. Number 2. Forbes Flub Oh, I'm sorry, was that not enough proof for you that Kylie sucks? Well hey, here you go. As mentioned earlier in this list, Kylie Jenner made the cover of Forbes magazine in 2019 as the youngest self-made billionaire ever following the successful partnership between her cosmetic brand, named after herself, and Ulta, a beauty salon company. Well, it turned out that wasn't really the case. Jenner allegedly sold half of her cosmetics company, Kylie Cosmetics, to beauty giant Cody in a deal worth $1.2 billion. Now, this was huge and considered one of the greatest celebrity cash outs of all time. But the first rule of being a famous person is if you can help it, try not to lie. Especially to like Forbes magazine, who did some digging and revealed that Jenner was actually inflating the size and profit margins of her business. It turned out the cosmetic brand was on a much smaller scale than originally thought, as it was uncovered Jenner only actually made around $314 million after taxes for her company. Several financial advisors backed up the story, claiming that they were berated into complying with the lie and made to help maintain the 
numbers for publicity sake. The mother of the family, Chris, even played a key role in gathering false business documents to send to Forbes, making her company appear to be in the billions. Remember, if you can't figure something out, just ask mom. And number one, the lawsuit. In March of 2021, a lawsuit was arranged by several of Kim's former employees. The plaintiffs claim Kardashian West failed to pay over time, cover expenses, or provide any legally mandated breaks, which like, hey, super illegal. They also never received actual pay stubs or any proof of payment whatsoever. They were also made to purchase everything out of pocket, and one plaintiff was even fired on the spot for simply addressing his concerns to Kim. And when the rest were eventually let go, they received no type of severance package or pay of any kind. It was also uncovered that Kim would keep 10% of all of their earnings earnings for tax purposes, but failed to report their employment to tax authorities. Kim's argument was that she could not be held responsible for any of this, as most of her employees were supposedly hired and paid by a third party company, meaning that she herself was not technically their direct employer and therefore could not be liable. Kim maintains that she paid people on time and that they were suing the wrong person, but if that were the case, maybe Kardashian would have used some of her high status and influence long ago to make things work for her staff so that, hey, Maybe she wouldn't be getting sued right now. Something to think about, Kim. And there you go, guys. Those are the top 10 times that the Kardashians were exposed mistreating their staff. Which ones did me miss? And do you want to see a part two? Because we've got enough for it. We'll see you next time.